start with a word of prayer, shall we? Yeah. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we can spend now around your word, the Bible, to think about its message, to think about how it tells us that we should live our lives, how we should serve you. So we pray that you bless our evening together now and help us and be with us. And we ask these things through Jesus, whose return we pray will come soon. Amen. Okay, so uh, this evening we're doing a follow-up to what we looked at last week. So you might remember that last week Tim dealt with, uh, he dealt with Christian marriage. Unfortunately, tonight's subject is, is not really a very pleasant one. So we're going to be looking at dealing with, uh, facing problems in marriage. So hopefully it will be a, a practical lesson, but one with, uh, with some spiritual lessons, obviously, of course. خب قاعدتا یه سری چیزه عملیه بیشتر ولی خب یه سری درس های چی میگن معنوی هم و روحانی هم میتونه واسه هم داشته باشه اوکی سو لیس جس ریمایند آرسیلز اباوت دی پرینسپلز اف میریج دت وی لوکد ات لاست ویک خب بریم به اون اصول و قواعد ازدواج نگاه کنیم که هفته پیش نگاه داشتیم بهش because when we're dealing with with uh, facing problems in marriage we have to keep those principles as a foundation چون زمانی که در حقیقت می‌خوایم به این فرد ازدواج شما مقول ازدواج هستن بحث می‌کنیم واسه اینا اون پایه و اساس ازدواج هستن and we establish that marriage is a principle which is established by god himself خب مهمترین قضیه اینه که اصلا ازدواج پایه اساسش چیزیه که توسط خدا تأسیس شده بنا شده واسه انسان and it's a serious commitment between a man and a woman و یک عهد و پیمان خیلی جدی بین زن و مرد هستش and the fact that it is between a man and a woman is also very important و همین ب... خیلی مهم هم هستش که بین مرد و زن میمونه because god strictly forbids relationships between Uh, people of the same sex between a man and a man and a woman and a woman و چون خداوند به شدت اون رابطه رابطه بین دو تا دو نفر از یک هم جنس و مثل مرد و مرد زن و زن کلا ممنوع کرده what we also saw is that quote uh, where it says that a man leaves his parents and cleaves or joins to his wife و مورد قسمت از یکی که توی پیدرش باب دو آیه 24 میخونیم که مرد پدر مادر خود رو ترک گفت و به زن خیش خواهد توی بست And that doesn't mean that, that the man forgets his parents It just means that his wife and his new family become his priority به این معنی نیست که مرد پدر مادر خودش رو کلان فراموش کنید به معنی که اون زن و همسرش شایقا در اولویت میشه و عرجعیت داره بسش And the ideal situation is for a man and a woman, a husband and wife, uh, to live together, working together for the Lord. And we looked uh, at some words from the New Testament that told us that marriage should be within the truth, it should be in the Lord. و اینکه ازدواج باید در پای و اساس قانون اتفاق بده و رخ بده. And another Bible quote uh, we saw talked about man and woman becoming one flesh. So that means in their, their physical relationship they must remain faithful to each other. و مهمتر قسمت دیگه اون را ازدواج این بود که توی پیدرش باب دو آیه 24 می گفت که به یک تن خواهند شد به معنی که اون رابطه جنسی که توی رابطه زن و شوی برقراره فقط همونجا میمونه و به همدیگه وفادار خواهم بود از این نظر well. 
و یک تعریف و معنی خیلی زیبای معنوی هم پشت این هستش that it represents uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and his bride the church or the ecclesia که دقیقا نشونگر اون رابطه عیسی مسیح و کلیسا به عنوان کلیسا که عروس عیسی حساب میشن and so the roles in a marriage the role of a man the role of a woman they mirror the relationship between Jesus and his bride his church و اون نقشایی که توی رابطه زن و شوهر هستش نشونگر رابطه بین عیسی مسیح و اون کلیسای خودشه okay. okay but it's difficult sometimes because problems may occur in a marriage خب یه وقته خب غالبا سخت دیگه مشکلات پیش میاد اتفاق میفته توی رابطه because after all a marriage is between two human beings and none of us are perfect و خب منتظر اینه که این همه هیچ کدوم که عالی نیستیم چون رابطه ازدواج بین دو تا انسانه and we know that some families and some individuals are devastated when things go wrong in a marriage و خانواده ها زمانی که مشکل پیش میاد و اتفاق پیش میاد خیلی پراکنده میشن و خیلی اصلا وضعیت خانواده بد میشه and it not only affects Uh, the husband and the wife it can affect the children it can affect the wider family it can uh, affect friends it has a wide ranging impact و میتونه یک تاثیر خیلی گسترده ای داشته باشه میتونه توی رابطه زن و شوهر زن و بچه و بزرگترش که میکنه بین خانواده ها و حتی دوستان تاثیر داشته باشه but one of the principles we saw last week is that marriage is a lifelong commitment and so if there are problems we do need to find a solution to those problems و منتجدی که هفته پیش نمار کردیم که زن ازدواج یک عهد و پیمان همیشگی و جاودانه and it is a difficult and emotive subject it's not an easy subject but one that we need to address و برای مشکلاتی که تو ازدواج پیش میاد باید این رای حلی پیدا کنیم و میدونیم قاعدا سخت یک موضوع خیلی مشکلی هستش این قضیه And this evening, all I can do, and all we can do through the scripture, is present the principles that we need to stick to if there are problems in a marriage. Because more often than not, uh, there are never two situations that are exactly the same. چون همه شر... موقعیت و شرایطی که توش قرار هر کس قرار میگیره فرق داره و هیچ کدومش یکسان نیست. And so uh, for each individual problem then we need to try and find uh, what the principles are that underpin uh, how we can solve that problem. و توی اون شاید باید بنویسیم اصلا اون مشکل اون چیه چه جوری باید باش دیل کنیم چه جوری باید باش جلو بریم سر کارش باشه. Okay, so we're going to look at, uh, I'm just counting now, one, two, it's about four, four or five different problems that we may encounter. The other thing to note is that some issues may be cultural in nature. Yes, I should say that you have to as ریشه فرهنگی میاد رسم و رسومی هستن uh, we're going to try uh, and, and look at these principles uh, some of them uh, we may not face particularly in, in this country or, or where the countries we come from but they are issues we find in the bible خب یه سری از مشکل ها شاید ما از کشوری که حالا میان هر کدوم از اهل هر جا هستیم شاید نباشه ولی چیزایی هست که توی کتاب ما هست میتونیم ببینیم Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is, is what happens in a situation when either the husband or wife is converted after they are married. Okay, so we're going to spend a bit of time in Corinthians. So I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Sorry, 2 2 Corinthians chapter 6 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 So what we're told is, is that baptized believers should marry baptized believers 
خب یه چیزی که ما همیشه میگیم اینه که کسانی که قصه تعمید شدن با ایمانداران قصه تعمید شده ازدواج کنن So that's what it says in this verse. It says, do not be unequally yoked. Uh, don't be joined together with unbelievers. And then look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 39. Okay, so a wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she's free to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. زن تا زمانی که شوهرش زنده است به او بسته است اما اگر شوهرش درگذشت آزاد تو با هر کی که میخواهد ازدواج کند البته فقط در خداوند But what about a situation where we have uh, people who are already married uh, when they learn the gospel خب حالا میرسیم به این شرایطی که دو نفر از قبل ازدواج کردن و حالا با کتاب مقدس آشنا شده Okay, should they separate in their marriage? Should they stay with their partner even though they might not believe the gospel? Well, let's go back to what it said in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 12. Okay, so it says to the rest I say, I, not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. Okay. همچنین اگر زنی شوهر بی ایمان دارد و آن مرد حاضر است به او زندگی کند آن زن نباید شوهر خود را طلاق بگیرد. Okay so when when 1 Corinthians was written then this was a very common problem as the gospel spread then people were obviously baptized. خب این زمانی که در قرنتیان نوشته می‌شده یکی از اون مشکلات متداول اون زمان بوده. به قول تو اون زمانه که تمام استش خیلی ترویج پیدا می‌کرد بین مردم. But often their husband or their wife they were not baptized and they were an unbeliever. Paul says in that situation, they don't separate, they stay together. Because a married person has a responsibility to their husband or wife and to their children. And as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, it should be more caring than before, perhaps. And so every effort should be made to make sure that that marriage works. پس همه لحاظ باید از لحاظ اخلاقی و همه جوره ما متوجه شون که اون ازدواج اون کار آمده But we're told that if the unbelieving uh, partner chooses to separate the baptized partner uh, has to unfortunately accept this اگر دو طرفی که یکیشون ایمان داره اون شخص بی ایمانه توی رابطه درخواست طلاق کنه اون شخص ایمان داره توی رابطه باید بپذیره Okay, let's uh, just read verses 14 and 15. The unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. زیرا شوهر به ایمان به واسطه همسرش تقدیس می شود و زن به ایمان به واسطه شوهرش در غیر این صورت فرزندان شما ناپاک می بودن. اما چنین نیست بلکه آنان مقدسن اما اگر آن که به ایمان است بخواهد جدا شود بگذار چنین کنند در چنین وضعی شوهر یا زن مؤمن اجباری ندارد به او زندگی کند ولی خدا ما را به صلح و آشتی خوانده است 
Okay, let's turn over to 1 Peter chapter 3, because there's an important uh, couple of verses in that chapter. Okay, so 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives, when they see your respectful and pure conduct. اول پیتوس باب سه آیه یک و دو به همین سان شما ای زن و تسلیم شوهران خود باشید تا چنانچه برخی کلام را اطاعت نکنند بیان که سخنی بر زمانهاری در اثر رفت و رحم زنانشان جذب شوند زیرا زندگی پاک و خدا ترسانه شما را مشاهده خواهند کرد سو پیتر از تنگیم به این بپتیز وایف که از مرید به این انبپتیز هزبند و داره در راجب یک بانوی قصه تمید شده که از با یک آقا که قصه تمید نشده ازدواج کرده صحبت میکنه okay, but it, other, it also works the other way around if you have an unbaptized husband and a, sorry an unbaptized wife and a baptized husband و از اون ور قضیه هم چیز میشه دیگه که مثلا یک زنی که قصه تمید نشده با مردی که قصه تمید شده ازدواج کرده But whatever the situation, the important thing he's saying is that by remaining together, the partner who is baptized, their way of life may convince the other partner to become a Christian. In the most important part is that the person who is baptized in the relationship, whether he wants to be a man or a woman, can be convinced by the way he lives and in 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 the way he lives. متقاعد کنه به اومدن به سمت دین and those who are baptized those who are believers they also shouldn't cut off their unbelieving family و اونها این قصه تمیشان نباید دیگه حالا اون خانواده شون مثلا تا حالا ایمان نداشن ندارن یا اصلا هر چیزی دیگه اونها هم قطع رابطه کنن باشون so so parents brothers sisters they uh, may have an opportunity through their baptized uh, relation That to uh, understand and be taught the gospel. Okay, so that's the first uh, issue this evening. The second one is around infertility. Uh, could you please? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> sorry, Amir. So this, this, is when, um, this is this is when the, the the wife or well, both parties obviously they cannot have children. All right. Hala, me and some of the name it one and Okay, and this is a very sad situation uh, where we know that some married couples are unable to have children. Cool. خب خیلی شرط سخت و ناراحت کننده است میدونی یه سری افراد قابل قابل اینه میتونن دقیقا بچه دار بشن. And it can be a, a difficult, a heartbreaking, a very emotional problem. و یک مشکل دقیقا شکنند چی میگم خیلی دردناک این قضیه. Now let's go to Romans 8 verse 28. رومیان 8 آیه 28. Okay, so I'm going to quote this verse, um, but it perhaps doesn't really, how am I, how am I going to say this? So each, each situation again is very different. And it's very difficult, but I think each partner within the marriage, the married couple, they have to rely on faith in God. مهمتن قسطان از اینه که اون دو نفر شرک های زندگی باید همیشه ایمانشون به خدا باشه باید به خدا تکیه کنند دو زندگی هاشون And it can be a difficult situation but this verse does give a lot of comfort ولی خب خیلی هم سخته ولی خب این آیه میتونه خیلی تسلی بخش باشه Okay, Romans 8 verse 28 And we know that for some uh, Sorry, we know that for those who love God all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. 
رومیو با بعد شایه 28 میدانیم در حق آنان که خدا را دوست میدارن و بعد طب غیراده او فراغ آنه شدن همه چیز با هم برای خیریت در کار است Okay, now this doesn't mean that the, the marriage has failed because failed. children uh, cannot be had. We know that in some cultures, uh, a man is able to divorce his wife if his, if his wife is not able to have children. برای زن مرد بیشتر که اگر زن کسی نتونست باردار بشه و نتونست بچه دار بشه اون زن اجازه مرد اجازه اینو داره که طلاق بده زنش ولی اصلا که تماس رو این موضوع اصلا هیچ صحبتی نمیکنه و همچنان اونها رو زن شوهر خطاب میکنه خدا و اگر حتی نمیتون بچه هم داشته باشن باید یک خانواده با هم به اونها کنار هم And as we will see a little later on, this might actually present opportunities to serve the Lord. Okay, so what about difficulties between a husband and wife? Difficulties in their relationship. Okay, let's go into the Old Testament. to one Samuel, one Samuel 25. 25. So here's, here's the example of um, a lovely woman by the name of Abigail and her foolish husband by the name of Nabal. <laughs> ابی جایل رو داریم با یک شوهرش که حالا یک آدم خیلی احمقیه. Okay, so we're, we're, told, we're given a description of his character in verse 17. و یک, ش... یک چیزی از شخصیتش هم ما میگه تو آیه 17. So he was a man, he was a rich man, he had many servants and it says, Now therefore know this and consider what you should do for harm is determined against our master and against all his house and he is such a worthless man. No one can speak to him. Avasamul bi sopan ayeh hebda. Pas halo pas hal tadbir kade. Bemin che mi tawani kade. Zira musibat bar server ma va bar hame khandanash mukadder ast. Va khod u chenam furumaye ast ki nemi tawan ba on sukhan goft. Okay, so we haven't got time to look at this in detail. I think it's worth having a look at this chapter, this this story that kind of stands on its own, if you like, in one Samuel twenty five. Khob. الان وقت نمی کل داستان جلو ولی خب توی وقت خودتون اگه بتونید بخونید خیلی داستان جالبی و اصلا ارزش خوندن داره واقعا. But we told that Abigail was was a wonderful woman. She was a lovely woman of great faith. و ابیجایل یک زن خیلی خوبی بوده با یک ایمان خیلی عظیم. And even though she was married to this this worthless man, she stayed with him and tried to do the right thing. با اینکه با یک انسانی ازدواج کرد که اصلا درست کار نبوده ولی تو اون رابطه ازدواج زنشویش مونده بوده. And what we find at the end of the chapter is that because of this God blesses her. و به خاطر همینا خدا بهش برکت میده. So that's one example. But, but even when two Christians are married there can be great unhappiness. و این یه مثالشه و حالا که مثلا دو تا مسیح ازدواج میکنن شاید میتونه اونجا پر از خوشحالی و خوشبختی و اتفاق خوب باشه. And this goes back to what we said at the start, because this is a relationship between two human beings, both of whom are going to have weaknesses. So often uh, we can be very selfish in our attitudes and the things that we say and the things that we do. و خب یه وقتی میتونید توی اون کارهایی که میکنیم و چیزایی که میگیم خیلی خودخواه مقرور باشیم میشه اصلا We might be critical of our husband or wife و منتقد باشیم به اون همسر یا شوهرمون We might expect a lot from them when we don't contribute much to the marriage و زمانی که ما زیاد نمیان مشارکت کنیم توی رابطمون و کمک کنیم به اون رابطمون خیلی بیشتر بهشون گیر میگیم And one thing about our human nature 
is that it's always easier to see somebody else's faults than it is to see our own faults. و به عنوان انسان کلا خیلی دیدن ای و نفس دیگران خیلی واسه آسان تر تا اینکه آقا بیام نگاه کنیم ببینیم خودمون چه ایوایی داریم So let's look at Matthew chapter 7 and see what Jesus says about this part of our human nature بریم به مطابع و هفت ببینیم راجعه به این موضوع چه میگه بریم Okay so Matthew 7 verse 1 to 5 مطابع هفت یک تا پنگ Okay, judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Matahaf, <laughs> Yekopak. داوری نکنید تا بر شما داوری نشود زیرا به همون گونه که بر دیگران داوری کنید بر شما نیز داوری خواهد شد و با همون پیمانی که وصل کنید برای شما وصل خواهد شد چرا پر کاه را در چشم برادرت می‌بینی اما از چوبی که در چشم خود داری غافلی چگونه می‌توانی به برادرت بگویی بگذار پر کاه را از چشم به در آورم حالا که چوبی در چشم خود داری ای ریاکار تو خود چوب را از چشم خود به در آور آنگاه بهتر خواهید تا پر کاه را از چشم برادرت بیرون کنی And this goes to all works of all walks of life, not just a marriage. و نه تنها ازدواج بلکه بر تمام مقولات زندگی انجام پذیر این قضیه. Whereby we need to look at our own faults first. We need to look at our own motives before we judge others. قبل از اینکه کسی رو قضاوت کنیم بیایم اول نگاه به خودمون بندازیم نگاه به اعمالمون کردارمون گفتارمون بندازیم. So it is in a marriage. We need to think about our own motives, our own problems, our own uh, weaknesses before we look at the weaknesses of our husband or wife. اون ضعف ها مشکلات و اون چیزایی که نقص توی خودمون هستش نگاه کنیم بعد بیایم بقیه رو قضاوت کنیم. Of course one of the best things to do when a marriage becomes difficult is to approach God and to pray about these problems. یکی از بهترین راهی که میشه گفت زمانی که مشکل میکنیم توی ازدواج اینه که دقیقا به خدا و از خدا بخوایم کمک کنیم و به درگاهش دعا کنیم. And perhaps on occasions a marriage fails uh, because either the, the husband or the wife are not putting God central in their lives. و مشکل زمانی که مشکل میخواد دقیقا اون خدایی که میتونه به اون کمک کنه توی مشکلاتمون و راه درست رو پیش پاون بذاره. So approaching God together in prayer is a wonderful way to try and address these problems. و به درگاه خدا رفتن با دعا کردن بهترین راهه. And there needs to be openness, there needs to be honesty, there needs to be forgiveness. و بخشندگی چی میگن رو راست بودن باز بودن راجع به همه مسائل خیلی چیز مهمی توی ازدواج And again, it's a principle not only in marriage but in all parts of being a disciple that it's difficult for God to forgive us our sins if we're not to f- prepared to forgive another their sins. و اگر نتونیم ما گناه بقیه رو ببخشیم خود بخشیده شدن گناهان متواصل خداوند هم قاعدتا یه مقدار سخت خواهد بود پس. And so disciples of Christ must put all their effort into trying to save their marriage. و تلاش یک شاگرد و موریدان ایسای مسیح و برای این باشه که اون رابطه زناشوی همیشه حفظ بشه Now of course uh, especially in this country and in most of the western world then divorce is a very easy thing to do توی آلا بریتانیا و کلا کشوره قرد طلاق خیلی آسان یه چیزی خیلی آسان و راحتی Okay let's see what the apostle Paul says about divorce in 1 Corinthians Uh, chapter 7 باب 7 کلا کسی میخواد راجع به زناشویی چیزی بخونه بهترین جا واسه خوندنشه و کلا هم امشب خیلی باش کار داریم okay 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 10 باب 7 آیه 10 okay to the married i give this charge not i but the lord the wife should not separate from her husband But if she does, she should remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And the husband should not divorce his wife. 
حکم اول قرانتیان باب هفت آیه ده و یازده حکم من برای متحلان این است نه حکم من بلکه حکم خداوند که زن نباید از شوهر خود جدا شود اما اگر چنین کرد دیگر نباید شوهر اختیار کند و یا اینکه باید با شوهر خود آشنی نماید مرد نیز نباید زن خود را طلاق بگیرد Okay, so we'll come back to, to what the Lord Jesus says about uh, divorce in a few moments. Okay, what about unfaithfulness in marriage? Because this is where Jesus says that actually this, there may be a case for divorce Uh, when there is unfaithfulness in the marriage. Right, دقیقاً اون بیفتی که توی زواج هستش دقیقاً همون که عیسی مسیح اجازه طلاق رو میده. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19. Jesus was asked a question about what he thought about the Jewish um, the Jewish principle of of granting divorce. Right. بعد از این داشت راجع به تعلیم در ازدواج طلاق صحبت میکرد اصلا بهشون یاد میده که حالا اصلا بر اساس اون رسم و رسومات یهودی داستانش چی به چی میشه متا 19 4 تا 6 اوکی ولیس رید ورس 3 فرست اف اول اند دی فارسیز کیم تو هیم اند تستد هیم بای آسکینگ Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What man has joined together, let not man separate. Uh, فریسیان نظر شما تا او را بیازمایند آنها پرسیدند آیا جایز است که مرد زن خود را به هر علتی طلاق دهد عیسی در پاسخ گفت مگر نخوانده که آفریننده جهان در آغاز ایشان را مرد و زن آفرید و گفت از همین رو مرد و پدر مرد پدر و مادر خود را ترک کرده به زن خیش خواهد پیوست و آن دو یک تن خواهند شد بنابراین از آن دو پس دیگر دو تن نیستند بلکه یک تن میباشند پس آن چرا خدا پیوست انسان جدا نسازد Okay, so Jesus is taking our minds right back to the very first marriage. And he says that, that, that uh, he's using the example of Adam and Eve and he's saying that, that marriage is binding. He says what God has joined together Don't let man separate. Okay, so Jesus says that divorce is forbidden. But he does say that there is one exception. And that's when the husband or wife cheats on their husband and wife or wife zamani ke yeki az taraf mi hala che zan che mar khianat mikone dar un rabite and one enters into a physical relationship with somebody outside the marriage va warde yek rabite jensi daqiqan mishe gof mishan ba yek shakhs ki kharij az rabite zan o shuyishun okay let's read verse 9 aye no i say to you whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery به شما میگویم هر که زن خود را به علتی غیر از خیانت در زن و شوی طلاق دهد و زن دیگر اختیار کند زنا کرده است so if there is unfaithfulness of course the ideal is to try and identify the problem to try and find a solution to the problem زمانی که دوران بی اخلاقی یا بی افتی رخ میده تو ازدواج اون بی وفایی رخ میده به ایدال ترین شا... چیز ممکن اینه که اون مشکل رو شناسایی کنن و حلش کنن اول از همه 
And of course, again, we're talking about a very difficult situation, very emotive situation. و قاعدتا اون دوره راجع به یک شرایط خیلی سخت و شدید داره صحبت می‌کنه. And the ideal situation is for the for the one partner to forgive the other. و اینکه یکی از اون شری... اشخاص توی رابطه که حالا اون طرفی که خیانت کرده رو ببخشه. Jesus is saying if that can't be done then there are grounds for uh, a divorce in that marriage. و اگر این اتفاق افتاد اون طلاق جایز هستش. Okay. Let's look at uh, one of these issues which isn't which is not legal in this country polygamy so that's uh, uh, marrying more than one person you've muted yourself Amir. it means uh, to marry uh, to mar- get married in two in two person in the same time yes two or more polygamy. people to be married so if i had six wives oh okay و این حالا به قسمت بعدیش که میرسیم به چند همسریه. Now the reason why we're looking at this is because this often occurred in the Bible. و علتش اینه که چون توی کتاب مقدس هم رخ داده این موضوع. And we're told uh, that David, a man after God's own heart, had uh, several wives. و مثلا داوود کسی که به مردی که قلب و روحش با خدا یکی بود چندین همسر داشته. His son Solomon he didn't just have several wives he had several hundred wives. Va Suleiman pesarish chandin zanash chandin sad zan dashte. Of course we can see from Genesis from the very first marriage that the ideal is for one man one woman. Va az ham ibtedai kar mitun tuy paydash mimin ke faqat yek zan va yek mard. Okay, and what we can see is that in the lives of uh, some of these individuals who had more than one wife, then it did, did cause immense difficulties in their marriage. Okay, so we know that Jacob had two wives, and then not only did he have two wives, but these two wives were sisters. Yaqub kazan yek az ma'ruftaynash ke do ta zan dash. And the jealousy in the relationship between those two wives caused all kinds of problems in that family. Let's have a look at 1 Kings chapter 11 and see the problems that Solomon had because of all of his wives and his concubines. و بریم به اول پادشاه باب 11 و اون سلیمان که اصلا دیگه گل سرسبد موضوع Okay 1 Corinthians 11 and verses 1 to 4 11 یک تا 4 sorry That's all right go ahead I just translated that that's it did thank you Now King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh Moabite Ammonite Edomite Sidonian and Hittite women from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they be, neither shall they with you. For surely they will turn your heart away after their gods. Solomon's countries in love. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. But when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after others' gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. اول پادشاه 11 یک تا 4 و اما سلیمان پادشاه سوای دختر فرعون زنان اجدادی بسیاری از موابیان، امونیان، ادومیان، سیدونیان، هیتیان دوست می داشت. از همان قوم هایی که خداوند درباره آنها بنی اسرائیل فرموده بود که نه شما با ایشان وصلت کنید و نه ایشان با شما زیرا به یقین دل شما را به سوی پیروی از خداین خود برخواهند گردانید اما سلیمان در عشق به ایشان پیوست او را 700 زن بانو بود و 300 متعه و زنانش دل او را برگردانیدند آری در زمان سال خوردگی سلیمان زنانش دل او را به پیروی از خداین غیر برگردانیدند و دل او دیگر همچون دل پدرش داوود با یهو و خودش کامل نبود اوکی سو دیس از ا بیت اف ان اکستریم اگزامپل و خب یه از اون مثاله خیلی 
شدید موضوع قضیه است و فکر می کنم دیگه کسی بیشتر از سلیمان بتونه 700 تا زندگی داشته باشه دیگه But the principle is there that because he had many wives they turned his heart away from the Lord. و همین موضوع نکنیم اون اون قانون اینجا دوره اجرای میشه که علت اینکه زن زیادی باشه دلش از خداوند برگردوندن. Okay, we won't turn there now, but in Matthew 19 Jesus says that we are just to have one wife. و توی متا باب 19 آیه 5 عیسی مسیح به ما دقیقا میگه که فقط says that a man cling to his wife and they shall become one flesh okay right this is the uh, this is the last principle we're going to look at so this is this is more about finding a husband or wife okay so we've learned that finding a wife uh, finding a husband that marriage is a very special gift from God. یعنی پیدا کردن اون همسر یا شوهر یک دقیقاً عطای هدیه‌ای که از جانب خدا هم نمایت شده. We've considered some of the difficulties uh, that may come about in a marriage. و به اون مشکلاتی که داشت می اومد تو رابطه هم نگاه کردیم. So it should be obvious that the the choice of a husband or wife is something extremely important. پس نشون میده که اون تصمیماتی که اون دو نفر توی را خیلی مهمه. Okay, if we go back into the Old Testament into Genesis, we see the, the, the lengths that Abraham went to to find a wife for his son Isaac. و مثلا اگه برگه این پیدایش زمانی که برای اصحاق میخواست زن بگیره با این. Now his son Isaac then uh, took, and his wife Rebecca took great care to find a wife for their son Jacob. و در واقع زمانی که فرسایی که از خدمتگانشون اونجا و به دنبال ریبکا و ریبکا رو به برای اسرائیل به همسری گرفت. So let's look at Genesis chapter 26 and verses 34 and 35. پیدایش 26 35 34 Okay, so um, Jacob had a brother called Esau. And he decided that he was going to get married and his mother and father were not happy with the choice that he made. Okay, so it says in Genesis 26 verse 34, when Esau was 40 years old, he took Judith, the daughter of Beeri, the Hittite, to be his wife. And Basimath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebecca. Hey, Dosh, Piso Shi, Shai, Siu Chao, Siu Pan. Hang on, Kay, Socha, Salabu, Yehudi, Dokhtar, Beire, Hiti, Vaniz, Basimath, Dokhtar, Elon, Elon, Hiti, Robes, and Nigel, for on those and the Giro, become a sour of a cot house together. And then Genesis twenty eight, verses one and two. Hey, Dosh, Piso Shai, Yehudu. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and directed him, you must not take a wife from the Canaanite women. Arise, go to Paddan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take as your wife from there one of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. Pedesh Pisash, Yektodo. Pasesok Yahoo, Parahonda, Uro Barkato, Uro Am Framude, Gof, Zani as Dokta, and can only Maggi, Valky Bakis of Faddon Oro, Hone Pedar Mother, Pedar so Isaac and Rebecca didn't want Jacob to make the mistake that happened to Solomon many years later. They knew how important it was to find the right partner for Jacob. Somebody who would reject idolatry. Well, we can't hear you, Amir. 
دقیقت کسی که بوت پرستی رو نپذیره و رد کنه okay, somebody, uh, قلبش رو از خدا هم بر نگردونه Now, what we're told to do um, is that for uh, looking for a husband or wife, we should look for spiritual qualities. Let's just go to one of those verses. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. Samuel chapter 16. Okay. So there is hopefully going to be a physical attraction between a man and a wife, a man and a woman. But the most important thing is that they um, are spiritually attracted to each other. And it's natural to want uh, somebody that Uh, is beautiful or handsome. مثلا کسی که خیلی خوش تیپ و خوش ظاهر و اینا غالبا واسه همه خیلی جذابه. But what really matters is the spiritual qualities of uh, that man or woman. ولی مهم ترین قسمت از اون شخص اخلاقیه. So we read in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 says but the Lord said to Samuel do not look at his appearance on the height of his stature because I have rejected him for the Lord sees not as a man sees man looks on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart اول سامر 16 آیه 7 اما خداوند به سامر گفت به سیما قامت بلندش من نگرد زیرا او را رد کردم خداوند همچون انسان نمی نگرد انسان به ظاهر می نگرد اما خداوند به دل okay so this is this was actually talking about the choice of a king و حالا یه فقط یه خلاصه هم بهتون بگم اینجا زمانی که دقیقه سمایه رفته از بچه های یسا یکی از اونا رو به عنوان پادشاه انتخاب کنه. But again, it's the principle that is the main thing here. و اون دوباره اوس قوانین و اصول قاعده است که مهمترین قسمت قضیه است. That we are to think about the heart and the mind of the individual and not the outward appearance. و نباید به اون ظاهر و سیمای طرف نگاه کنیم و اونا رو قضاعت کنیم به اساس اون. بلکه اون And a true marriage is about the coming together of two minds. Two people who have the same principles. And hopefully two people who are seeking first God's kingdom. Okay, one more uh, thing we're going to think about is, is what happens if we can't find a partner? What happens if we can't find a husband or a wife? و یه چیزی که میخوام بهش نگاه کنیم که اگر نتونیم اون شخص اون شرک زندگی رو چه زن چه مرد رو پیدا کنیم واسه خودمون چه اتفاق میفته؟ Okay, back over to the New Testament again, to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay, so verse 7 says, uh, so this is what, this is Paul speaking, and he says, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 7, I wish that all were as myself am, but each has his own gift from God, one of one kind and one of another. آرزو میکردم همه چون من بودن اما هر کس عطای خاص از خدا یافته است یکی داره یک عطاست و دیگری داره عطای دیگر so he's talking about the fact that he doesn't have uh, a wife خدا را شبیه سوال میگه اصلا خودش یک زن نداره and he's saying that being single can be a gift from God و این تنهایی و مجرد بودن کنه یک عطایی باشه از جانب خدا we won't read all those verses now I would Um, encourage you to have a look at them when we're finished <coughs> but it does say that a married person um, is concerned about two things in their lives first of all they have to serve God obviously but also they have to please their husband or wife and their children اولش اینه که به دنبال اون خدمت‌رسانی به خدا هستن و دومین قسمت 
دقیقاً چون اون خدمت رسانی به همسر و زن بچه‌هاش But being single can have many advantages because it means that that individual may be able to serve God without any distraction. و اون تنها بودن مجرد بودن یه سری خب فواید خودش داره که شما تمام وقتت آزادی و میتونی خدا رو خدمت کنی. Okay, so that's a, an important principle because not everyone is going to be able to find a husband or a wife. چون هر کسی نمیتونه حالا شاید هر کسی شاید قادر نباشه بتونه مثلا یک زن یا یک مرد واسه خودش پیدا کنه زندگیش. Okay, so let's just sum up then. بریم برای جمعندی. So marriage is a blessing from God. یک برکتی از جانب خدا. We've seen that right from the very first that man and woman that marriage is something which is God given. و یک چیزی که توسط خدا به انسان داده شده. And it's clear that God wants us to be in families. و خدا از اون خود که اون توی اون خانواده بمونیم. They might be a natural family, but also, of course, God wants us to be in His spiritual family. و اون خانواده که الان شخصی هستش بین دو نفر و اینکه اون خانواده معنایی که خدا هم از ایمان داره تشکیل داده میخواد. And we can learn a lot about uh, our relationship with with our heavenly Father, with our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and our brothers and sisters from our natural uh, uh, marriages and family life. و میتونیم خیلی چیزا راجع به عیسی مسیح و خدا توی اون رابطه هم یاد بگیریم با خواهر و برادران و حتی زن زن و شیرمون. But of course what we've seen this evening is that just because a husband and wife uh, both have accepted the gospel it doesn't mean that problems may not come along. و چون حالا دو نفر خدا رو پر عیسی مسیح و کلام خدا رو پذیرفتن به این معنی نیست که اصلا مشکل دیگه نمیاد هیچ چیزی تو زندگیشون. The wonderful thing for us to look forward to is that we can be part of another marriage, that we can be part of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 19 verse 7. Okay, let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. به وجدای مشاهده کنیم و او را جلا دادن زیرا زمان عروسی آن بر فرا رسیده و عروس خود را آماده ساخته است. Okay, so if we have problems in our relationship, we need to think about that relationship that we are going to be part of the bride of Christ. اگه مشکلی هست توی رابطمون باید فکر کنیم که چون ما عروس عیسی مسیح هستیم. That the Lord Jesus Christ does not want to be separated from us. If there is a problem in our spiritual lives, then we have to fix it. We come to God in prayer and we seek help. And so it is in our natural lives as well, with our husband and wife. If there's a problem, then we need to try and find a solution. And then we know that all families of the earth one day will live and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. Okay, thank you, Amir. Sorry. Okay, do we have any questions? اگر کسی سوالی لطفا داره بپرسه. Only easy ones, please. I'll take that as a no. Yes. Amin Jan. Yes, I'm going to ask you. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to ask you. Jan, thank you. 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 حالا اگه ما ها که نیستیم چه مشکلی پیش اومده؟ تو جامعه خیلی ها هم و حقیده ما نیستن چه اشکالی پیش اومده؟ یعنی چه الزامی داره که باید یه خدا رو بپرستن به یه باور باشن؟ اینو بپرسیدم ایراد کار چیه؟ مرسی گفتش که قلب تو از خدا برمیگردونه 
اگه زنت اگه کس یه دین دیگه داشته باشه قلب من رو برمیگرده نه 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 الزامن نه کن با اونجا الان توی اوکی بذار من میپرسم ولی جوابش خود الان میترسم بدونه ولی خب میپرسم این مقام اوکی the question is I am a Christian and so I join Christianity and if I'm married to a, per- to a woman that she has a another she is joined another religion and she has some other beliefs so is something wrong with that or not well hopefully that came across with what we were saying at the beginning because yeah. it says we're told that no there isn't a problem there so i i i, uh, I wanted to explain about i so thought maybe i would ask you to explain it again okay so what we read in it, It's probably worth Muhammad looking at the verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, okay. So, I mean, the answer is right there. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 to 15. Okay. So, okay, so... So the, the, this kind of problem, as, as we said, has, has happened since the start of, of when the gospel was, was being taught and when the gospel was spread. That one partner would accept the gospel, but perhaps the other didn't. And so what Paul is saying is that, well, sometimes that's just what happens, and it's, it's okay. Uh, and what can happen on occasions is that the, the individual who does not believe, who hasn't accepted the gospel, may learn the gospel from their husband or wife. And that person who is not able to accept the gospel may learn the gospel from their husband or wife. And it says that that's usually done through conduct. It's through uh, the way that the believing individual lives their life. So if, if, the, if the believing husband or wife uh, shows in their life that the kingdom of God is the most important thing, then perhaps that can convince the other uh, part of, of, of the marriage to also accept the gospel. And it's not always going to happen, and it's never going to be easy, but that's what Paul says here, could happen. And of course, we have to approach God in prayer to help that to happen. And Does that help? Yes. Have another look at those verses uh, in your own time. 1 Corinthians 7 verses, uh, well, it's around verses 12 to, to 15 or 16. Well, have a look at oh, that yeah. chapter, 1 Corinthians 7, because that's all about the principles of marriage. Okay, so let's have a look at verses 12 to 15. To look at those with you. Okay. Uh, I am باشه پارسال در مورد این موضوع مفصل صحبت شد. Oh. بعد uh, کلا در مورد این صحبت شد که 
وقتی حالا یه شخصی طلاق میگیره به هیچ عنوان به عنوان در واقع یه مسیح نمیتونه هم همسر اختیار کنه برای بار دوم حالا نمیدونم تو خودت خاطرت هست این قضیه که کلی هم بحث شد الان الان من توی صحبت های اولیش متوجه شدم که میشه بعد از طلاق دوباره همسر اختیار کرد اینو میتونه به طور شفاف بگه من اینجا دید شدم این قضیه رو هم میپرسم so, getting divorce is not allowed but if we get divorce are we allowed to get married again Well, the Bible tells us that no, we can't. And I think I'm not sure. I'm not bad. I'm not sure. 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 I'm not So, if there is an immorality in the relationship and they get divorced, is there any chance for them to get uh, to get married again? Well, let's just have a look at that verse again. It's Matthew chapter nine. No, it wasn't nineteen, was it? Somebody shouted yes. out. Yes, remember. Was it nineteen? Yes. Nineteen. Yeah, this is four to six. Matthew, okay. that... do you want to read it? امیر ویسیس فور تو سیک بگین مطابه به نوزه آبیه در پاسا خوب مگر نخوانده که آفرننده جهان در آغاز ایشان رو مرد و زن آفرید و گفت از همین رو مرد پدر مادر خود را ترک کرده و زن خیش خواهد پیوست و آن دو یک تن خواهند شد بنابراین از آن پس دیگر دو تن نیستن بلکه ویس ناین ایست ویس ایست 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 ا به شما میگویم هر که زن خود را به علتی غیر از خیانت در زن و شوی طلاق دهد و زن دیگر اختیار کند زنا کرده است. Okay, so it says whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. اگر زنش رو طلاق بده ولی با یک زن دیگه ازدواج کنه زنا کرده. And just notice what's in the middle there except for sexual immorality. بجز و اون بحثش اینه بجز خیانت در زنشی so his question was about if one of the partner in the relationship come uh, cheats mm-hmm. so they are allowed to get divorced if they cannot find a, find a solution and the person cannot forgive the other one so after that they are divorced are they uh, is uh, are they allowed to get married again or not that's how i read that verse yes میگه این آیه میگه اگه دو نفر یه نفرشون خیانت کنه توی رابطه و نتونن راه حلی پیدا کنن و نتونن اون طرف موقعی که شخصی که خیانت کرده رو ببخشه میگه به نظر من این آیه میگه که اون شخص میتونه ازدواج کنه ولی اگر غیر از علت اون بی افتی بخوان طلاق بگیرن و برن ازدواج کنن میگه نه یعنی زنا میکنن اونجوری So, it, it, it's difficult because, of course, there's going to be all different kinds of situations. So, a divorce might happen before people accept the gospel. و دایره کسی که اون کتاب ماست با پذیرفته باشن که بتونه دایره چیز کنه. So that needs also to be taken into consideration. با یعنی چی میگم با یه سری چیزها رو در نظر بگیرن روی چیزی قبل که انج کاری انجام بده. So in some ways, it's it's difficult um, without having a spe- without having the specifics against which you can try and apply the principle. The next question is: yeah. So, uh, those who are in a relationship, in a marriage re- re- relationship, they can have sex. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So why? Uh, and maybe they can have a sexual relationship without making a child. Yes, that's right. Okay, so, and sex is a thing that people need to uh, to have it in their life. Yeah. And those who are single, why they cannot have uh, sex without making a child, like the no. other people, in, they cannot have it. No. 
So sex outside marriage, God says that that's not acceptable. سوالی بود که آیا اینکه سکس یه نیاز حیاتی برای انسان حالا چه شخصی که مجرد حالا چه شخصی که متأهله و حالا چرا کسایی که متأهل هستن میتونن سکس داشته باشن بدون اینکه بچه دار باشن و اینکه کلا داریم یه موضوعی که اصلا سکس خارج از رابطه زناشویی ممنوعه چیزی که دقیقاً خدا داره میگه and, and that's, that's a really important point uh, because we know that most of the world uh, nowadays they will freely have uh, sexual relationships outside marriage و خیلی چیز مهمیه چون دنیای اطراف ما میبینیم دقیقاً افراد خیلی راحت اون رابطه جنسی رو برقرار میکنن خارج از اصلا ارتب... اون رابطه زن و شوهر یا حتی زن دوستی برای یه مدت خیلی کوتاه و تموم میکنن okay certainly in the western world probably uh, almost 100% of, of couples before they're married have sexual relations but god says that that is not allowed absolutely not و مهمتر از همه که اصلا توی دنیای غرب چیزی که بعد جن میگه اینه که 100 درصد زوج هایی که ازدواج کردن 100 درصدشون قبل از ازدواج سکس کردن حداقل سکس داشتن با هم دیگه و داریم میگه که خیلی اصلا مطلقا ممنوعه چیزی که خدا داره میگه sexual relations are only allowed between a husband and a wife اون رابطه جنسی فقط بین زن و مردی که وارد رابطه زن و شوی شدن چی میگن جایزه خب اگر امیر جان من بپرس که yeah. اگر به ازدواج خط بشه چی یعنی اون احساس گناه yeah. همچنان باید باشه بعد از ازدواج تو so, if they had sex sexual uh, sexual relationship before marriage but they get married after that so is that still wrong or not still wrong yes میگه همچنان مورد قبول نیست پذیرفته نمیشه این قضیه اینو اشتباه نیست now of course god god can forgive he can forgive any sin but of course god does well, said that sexual relationships should only be have should only happen between a husband and a wife. قاعدتا خدا بخشنده است میبخشه اون گناه ولی خب چیزی که دقیقا خدا به خودش میگه اون ممنوع نه بر رخ بده. با آگاهی ممنوع دیگه. درسته الان که ما آگاه شدیم ممنوع برای ما. آره دیگه کسی که نمیدونه اصلا نصف نصف این دنیا اصلا شو اصلا از کتاب مقدس و اینو خبری نداشته باشه. Okay. Last call. Right. Shall we bring things to a close? Yes. Okay, let's just bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we thank you once again that we've been open able to open your word this evening and to consider its message to consider the blessing of marriage to consider what the bible tells us about it and how it all points forward to our relationship with the lord jesus christ and how we pray that when he returns we will be part of his bride and so we pray that you'll continue to bless us as we read and consider these things that you'll hear our prayer now through the lord jesus christ amen